God and the Genome, a talk and question and answer session with geneticist Francis Collins, held at Stanford University, February 5th, 2008. Good evening, everyone. Hi, good evening. My name is Lisa Wee, and I'm a graduate student in the School of Medicine. And it's my great pleasure today to welcome you to a talk entitled God and the Genome by Dr. Francis Collins. So before I begin, um, let me say that this event is organized by Ivy Grad, Chi Alpha, Stanford's Catholic Community, co-sponsored by the Veritas Forum and the Graduate Student Council. And at this time, we'd also like to extend special thanks to Dan Cho of Veritas for arranging Dr. Collins' visit, as well as the other many helping hands, um, the ushers and everyone else who has made this event possible. So before we begin, some housekeeping matters. First, would you please turn off your cell phones, pagers, and any other beeping devices? And a reminder that the main seating is for Stanford faculty and staff, as well as students, whereas the upper levels are open to the general public. For the structure of tonight's meeting, first Dr. Francis Collins will give his talk, followed by a Q&A session moderated by Dr. William Newsom. During the Q&A session, we'll have people in the aisles with microphones. So if you have any questions, please stay in your seats, and the microphone will be brought to you. The topics that Dr. Collins will discuss tonight will provide um, answers to some of the questions that you've been thinking about, but it's also likely to raise many more questions that you might want to discuss with like-minded individual, individuals. So throughout this week, there will be many roundtable discussions all over campus and we'll like, you to, uh, we'll like to invite you guys to come to these sessions. Information on the times and locations of these roundtable sessions can be found in your program. And in your program, you are also given a response card. And in this card, you can actually um, sign up and drop it off at the bookstore table. And with the response card, you'll be given a one-time email. Don't worry about spam, it's just a one-time email with more information about these roundtable sessions. In addition, there will be copies of Mere Christianity, a book written by C.S. Lewis that has greatly influenced Dr. Francis Collins. They'll be given for free to faculty and staff as you exit the main auditorium. The bookstore is also selling copies of Dr. Collins' book entitled Language of God in the Lobby, just after the Q&A session. Okay, thank you for coming. And one last reminder that there will be no photography allowed during this session. And now it's my pleasure to, in, um, to introduce Dr. William Newsom. Dr. William Newsom is Chair of Neurobiology at the Stanford University School of Medicine. He began his academic career with an undergraduate degree at Stetson University in Florida. He went on to pursue a doctorate degree in Caltech in Biological Sciences before um, doing a postdoctoral stint at the National Eye Institute. He went on to do his assistant professorship at State University of New York at Stony Brook for four years before he came to join us at Stanford University for the last 19 years. He has made fundamental contributions to the field of neural basis of visual perception as well as visually guided cognition. He has been honored with many awards and was appointed as investigator to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in 1997 and he was elected to membership in the National Academy of Sciences in 2000. And in addition to that, he's a much-loved faculty advisor to Ivy Grad. And so it's my pleasure to invite Dr. William Newsom to come up and introduce Dr. Francis Collins. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to welcome Dr. Francis Collins to Stanford tonight. Um, you guys can read his bio, all of the technical details in the program in front of you. I just thought I'd tell you maybe two or three things you might not know already. One, he was an undergraduate at the University of Virginia, and given all of his distinguished accomplishments during his scientific career, I think Thomas Jefferson would be very proud of his undergraduate. Secondly, Dr. Collins, it's not, this is not in your program, is a motorcycle rider. And uh, he rides a Harley-Davidson Road King Classic. And 
I am in many ways unlike Francis Collins. I'm not as good a scientist as he is, and I'm not as famous as he is, but I do ride a motorcycle. And I ride a Honda 750 Shadow Arrow, and just beforehand this evening, I had personally invited Dr. Collins to come tour the roads of Northern California with me. So I hope he'll take me up on that. Um, finally, it's written in your programs. Everyone here knows what Dr. Collins, his, his primary contribution to science and to society, is um, leading the project, the team, the worldwide team of scientists who decoded the human genome. Uh, what many people don't realize, although a lot of people in this room I'm sure realize, is that there was a competing effort from the private sector uh, to, to get this blueprint for the human genome before the publicly led effort. And if that had succeeded, it would have resulted in a lot of uh, patents issued on bits of human DNA uh, and people would have been making money basically off of human DNA. And one of the signal contributions of Dr. Collins and his team, some of his team are in the audience here tonight, there was a big portion of it at Stanford, was keeping this in the public domain so that this information is the heritage of all of humanity and not just some private companies. And many of us owe him a deep uh, uh, sense of appreciation for that. I'd just like to uh, read you one little passage from his book. This is going to be on sale afterwards. Um, and this, Francis says that when he was originally invited uh, to head the Human Genome Project, he decided not to do it. And he says, but the decision haunted me. There was only one Human Genome Project. This was going to be done only once in human history. If it succeeded, the consequences for medicine would be unprecedented. As a believer in God, was this one of those moments where I was somehow being called to take on a larger role in a project that would have profound consequences for our understanding of ourselves? Here was a chance to read the language of God, to determine the intimate details of how humans had come to be. Could I walk away? And he's going to give us the answer to that and some of his thoughts about that. And uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Collins, I welcome you to Stanford as a fellow scientist and as a Christian. And we look forward so much to hearing your talk. Welcome. Thank you for such a kind and generous introduction, and good evening to all of you who are not watching CNN this evening. <laughs> I know there's a lot of policy wonks at Stanford, and some of you are probably here thinking, boy, I hope I can get back and see what happened to those returns pretty soon. Well, we'll try to keep you amused for a little while with a presentation and then some questions from you about the issues, because we're going to talk about something pretty darned important. The question of whether science and faith are in fact potentially compatible or whether they in fact pose irreconcilable difficulties in trying to reconcile their worldviews. Uh, you have already guessed if you came here and saw some of the preliminary information and heard the introduction that my view is going to be that these are in fact uh, harmonious perspectives on ways to find the truth and that one can both be a rigorous scientist and a believer in God without encountering any really difficult problems that can't be reconciled by careful thought and attention to the details. I recognize that you've been exposed to some other perspectives on this. I gather Christopher Hitchens was here recently. Richard Dawkins will be coming soon. They have a somewhat different view. And it's wonderful that here at Stanford you have a chance to hear these dialogues and debates and conversations because these are, in fact, some of the most important questions that any of us ever get to ask. And it's terrific that in this academic center, there are forums like this one where those uh, questions can be debated. And I'm looking forward to hearing your questions as we get to that part of the program. So I'm going to do uh, the following. First, I'm going to walk you through very briefly uh, what the Human Genome Project is all about and why I as a scientist am enormously excited about the way in which it is providing us with insights about our own DNA instruction book that have profound consequences for medicine and for our understanding of ourselves. And then I'm going to tell you in a rather personal way how is it is that I came to be a believer in God. And then I'm going to pose for you several options about how people have tried to put together the scientific and the religious perspectives. And I'll particularly focus on the area of evolution because many people see this as a real flashpoint for that conversation. 
And ultimately, I will put forward what I believe to be a very comfortable and uh, quite exciting synthesis of those points of view and see how it sits with you.